Next, we're going to look at the privacy of sensitive data and laws that address that. We'll look at the European and United States legal approaches to protecting the privacy of sensitive data. We'll look at the legal issues regarding moving sensitive data across international boundaries, and we'll look at employee privacy topics. Here are some examples of U.S. laws regarding privacy. Uh, a couple of these we see is uh, the HIPAA, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, protecting privacy of medical information. We see the Graham-Leach-Bliley Act that protects individuals' non-public information, particularly regarding financial information. A couple others are the Sarbanes-Oxley Act uh, that requires accuracy in reporting of financial information and California Senate Bill 1386. I'm sorry, California Senate Bill 1836, my apologies. California Senate Bill 1836, again, that protects the privacy of information regarding uh, uh, residents of California. The European Union has slightly different concepts regarding privacy of information. They're a little more protective of the individuals. So let's run through this list. These are things you should know in taking the CISSP exam. They say that in order for you to gather private information on individuals or collect information, you have to state the reason for gathering this information. The data cannot be used for any other purposes. No information other than required information should be collected. No unnecessary information. The data has to be destroyed as soon as you're, you've satisfied the need for collecting the information. Only necessary individuals who are required to know this information are allowed access to the information. And if you're the guy collecting the information and it gets leaked, you are now in violation of the law. Very often, it's the law that is collecting this information on bad guys, but they find themselves in trouble because the information actually leaks uh, into the public hands. Another area of protecting privacy of information has to do with routing data through different countries. There's a couple issues here with this trans-border information flow. One area of concern is even though you might be sending data from here to here and you understand the laws at both endpoints regarding the privacy of information, the types of information that can be uh, commuted over these wires, and also the types of encryption that can be used at these two endpoints, you also have to be concerned about the countries in between those two endpoints. Because while it might be legal at this point and at this point, you might pass through a country where the type of encryption that you're using is not authorized. Therefore, you're committing a felony in that country. Also, the type of information might be illegal to be commuted on public wires in those countries. So you, again, you might be committing a felony by sending medical information across these wires, even though it might be legal at the two endpoints. So you need to understand where the information flow is, what countries you're going to be passing that information through, and what the laws are in those countries. Otherwise, you could be in violation of their federal laws. One large sticky area has to do with uh, employee privacy. Employee monitoring has to be carefully approached. First, talk to your legal department and ensure that it's legal for you to monitor in any capacity and then understand what the local laws are regarding employee monitoring. Second, almost always, the employees need to be made aware that they'll be monitoring, uh, that they'll be monitored, and they must approve your monitoring of, of their actions. Uh, this generally is something that can only be accomplished at the time that the employee is being hired. As part of the original employee agreement, uh, it should be clearly stated that we reserve the right to monitor any and all activities anytime you are on company property or performing on the company's behalf, and that you reserve the right to monitor everything including their keystroke monitoring, their, uh, your, you reserve the right to record their actions on a video camera, their telephone calls, monitor their emails, monitor their internet use. All these need to be clearly identified in advance of hiring them and this way there's a carrot for them so that they'll agree to this, this monitoring. If you already have employees that are already hired and you say we want you to sign this agreement about monitoring, what, does the, what is going to compel them to sign this agreement? they very well may not want to agree to this. And at that point, it probably is not legal for you to fire them for not signing this agreement. So generally, this has to be done way up front at the time of uh, making the potential employee a job offer. 
Again, please be sure that uh, it is legal in your local areas to implement any type of monitoring. Another aspect of this is you have to be very careful about not, disc not uh, uh, implementing discrimination with your monitoring. It's against the law for you to target any specific individual. The monitoring has to be an overall general security thing and uh, is, it cannot be specific to any individual. 